This is the Pulse of the Plankton for the week of April 19th, 2021, fresh from the edge of San Francisco Bay by a light microscope, a snapshot of local marine plankton, living ocean drifters. Last week in the zooplankton, zooplankton are the animal-like plankton that eat other organisms. And this week was filled to the brim with copepods, barnacles, and worms. There were full golden brown bellies everywhere. There were copepods of different ages and species, barnacle noplii in many sizes. All of these arthropods molt, shed their exoskeleton so that they can grow. The exoskeleton is hard and it doesn't stretch when they grow, so they molt. Early in the week, at low tide, there were many polychaete worms, well-fed and growing fast. Polychaetes are bristle worms. See the bristles? They're called chitae. Here, on this worm, there are spots on the little stumpy leg-like bumps. Those bumpy nubs are called parapodia. And here's a pheronid worm larva. The adults are called horseshoe worms. Last week in the phytoplankton, phytoplankton are the plant-like plankton that make their food from sunlight, water, and carbon dioxide. There were very few dinoflagellates in the plankton this week. See here, you can see it has a groove around its waist. That's the cingulum. And another groove that extends down away from the waist, that's the sulcus. If it swims just right, you can barely see one of its flagella. Diatoms are single-celled algae with cell walls of glass like opal. The diatoms this week were marvelous. There were still many, many catoceras this week. This catoceras sends chloroplasts out into its hollow spines. Those spines are called setae. A chain of Stephanopixis and Odontella. And this statillum. I sped up the video so you can see the movement inside of the cell. The highlight this week for me was this very busy chain of diatoms. Bacillaria paxillifera. The individual diatoms in this colony slide back and forth against their neighbors. This sliding chain of clones appears to have organized movement. One of the two lookalikes in the plankton this week is this Catocera socialis, a globular shaped chain of individual diatoms chained together in a curled up ball. Whereas this glob of cells, this is phaeocystis. They're algae, but just not diatoms. They clump together in a jelly-like matrix. This week in the Pacific Coast ocean weather, we look back at last week. We left you with an image that shows how exceptional our springtime upwelling has been this year. In the lower left, of the figure, we see our path around a typical year in terms of upwelling and how filled with nutrients the upwelling water is. See January, the dark blue dot, and then it follows around February, March, and then this green dot here. This is a typical April. Now, the green dot in the upper right corner, that's last week in April. The upwelling is intense and upwelled waters are rich. So far, this figure shows you the pulse of the physics, but what about the phytoplankton? Now, chlorophyll are a class of green pigments that plants and phytoplankton use to absorb energy from light. Here, this satellite imagery of chlorophyll allows us to estimate phytoplankton growth and distribution. Think about how powerful this tool is. You can see plankton from space. The alternative would be to count all of the phytoplankton on the sea surface, all at once, every day. From years of this data, we can relate chlorophyll to upwelling and the nutrient concentration of upwelling waters. Now we can put it all together and back in the path of our typical year, See how we typically dance through this relationship between physics and biology? 
here watch as we trace our way in weekly dance steps through 2021. Follow the dot as each new dot shows where we were during a week in 2021. This week's dot, up here. Upwelling is back down and the richness of that upwelling water remains high. And for the phytoplankton, we've slipped into their sweet spot. Upwelling is strong enough to bring up the nutrients and fuel phytoplankton growth, but not so strong that the physics reduces phytoplankton by pushing them offshore or mixing them out of the surface through features like eddies. Where will our next step land? That was the pulse of the plankton for the week of April 19th, 2021. Hey, it's Jim Metzner, and you've been listening to The Pulse of the Plankton. Now, if you've enjoyed this program, I would encourage you to find and support your nearest national marine sanctuary, because wherever you may live, the plankton of this planet are always downstream.